Good day my schoolers, this is my school channel and my name is Abiola. In this channel, we are solving the Jam CBT Pass question for the subject physics the year 2016. Remember, you have to stay with us because we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel and in this video clip we are solving questions 21 to 35 so we have to solve question 21 now so a metal rule is pivoted at its midpoint with a vertical force of 10 newtons and gained from the distance 20 centimeter from the midpoint okay at what distance must a 15 newton force hang to balance the roller horizontally this is very simple just use clockwise movement equals anti-clockwise movement so we would have 30 times 10 that is 300 already equals 15 times x okay so that is 300 equals 15 x so 15 divided by 300 of uh, 300 over 15 whichever we want to pick it that should be 20 so it has to be um, the distance has to be 20 centimeters so that this can create a balance so the correct option here is option c 20 centimeter number 22 a projector is fired from the ground level with a velocity of 300 meter per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal okay so calculate the time taken to reach the maximum height okay we are not asked to look for time of flight time of flight has to touch the ground again we are not asked to look for maximum height we are asked to look for the time taken to reach the maximum height so when it is being projected okay the maximum height not touching the ground again so to reach that maximum height so that will be the time taken to reach the maximum height is actually half of the total time of flight so let's go to the whiteboard and provide solutions to this very easy question so the time taken to reach maximum height is actually half okay of the time of flight and remember that, um, time of flight is 2u sine theta over g okay two strikes out two okay so we have t equals u we're giving u as 300 sine theta theta is 30 degrees so sine 30 is 0 0.5 over g that is 10 okay so we have 30 times 0 0.5 that gives you 15 seconds so the time to reach the maximum height is just 15 seconds so join me as we go back to the screen and select the correct option you will see that the option D is very correct. 23. A train with an initial velocity of 20 meter per second is subjected to a uniform deceleration of 2 meter per second square. Okay, the time required to bring the train to a complete halt is what? So let's go to this um, board and provide solutions to this question. So remember that um, we have deceleration, that is negative acceleration. So whatever value you are having, that will be A equals minus 2, okay? Uh, we are told that the initial velocity is given as 20, all right? And um, we are now told that we are looking for time T, okay, and V is 0. Alright, so we can use the first um, equation of motion, V equals to use U plus AT, or we can use acceleration equals change in velocity over time, whichever one works for us. So we can use acceleration equals V minus U over T. Acceleration is minus 2, remember negative acceleration, uniform deceleration, equals V, that is 0 minus 20, that is still minus 20. Okay. One will cross multiply so we have minus 2 times t equals minus 20 dividing both sides by minus 2 so the time required is 10 seconds so join me as we go back to the screen and select the correct option here we see 
Option B, 10 seconds as the correct option. Number 24, which of the following electromagnetic waves has the shortest wavelength? Okay, the one with the shortest wavelength, but the highest energy, of course, that is gamma rays. Okay, of all of the electromagnetic waves, the one with the shortest wavelength, once again, that is gamma rays and has the most energy. Okay, so the correct option here is option D for gamma rays. Don't forget to utilize the link in the description below. It's going to take you to the MySchool website where you can download the MySchool mobile app or get the MySchool software for just a token of 1,000 Naira. So join me as we tackle question 25. A radioactive isotope has a decay constant of 10 raised to the power minus 6. Calculate its half-life. So half-life equals that into over the radioactive decay constant. Okay, so the value of this is 0 0.693. The constant given from the question, the k constant is 10 raised to the power minus 6. So for the numerator, this means 0 0.693 means 693 times 10 raised to the power, if we move 1, 2, 3, minus 3. Okay, divided by 10 raised to the power minus 6. So this means 693 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 divide means minus into brackets minus 6 okay so we have 693 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 minus times minus that is plus 6 so minus 3 plus 6 or 6 minus 3 that gives you 3 so i have 693 times 10 raised to the power 3 or 6.93 times 10 raised to the power Five. Remember, if I move one, two, add the two here, then we have five. You know, different people have um, their approaches, different approaches towards how they manipulate standard form. This is just one technique I can I can recommend. So either you have six point nine three times ten raised to power five, or six nine three times ten raised to power three, whichever one works for us. Join me as we go back to the options to secure the correct answer. So we have. 6.93 times 10 raised to the power 5. So the half-life is found in option B. Kindly remember that you have to hit on the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as soon as we upload the next video clips. Number 26. Which of the following waves is both transverse and mechanical? So example of transverse wave we talk about water waves we talk about light waves we talk about radio waves waves on ropes or strings when you talk about mechanical waves you know they require material medium for their propagation example again is water waves we have another example like sound wave okay we have another example like a waves on rope or strings so i've just mentioned water waves twice so which of the following waves is both transverse and mechanical the answer is water waves option a 27. Calculating the temperature of 6 moles of an ID gas at a pressure of 7.6 times 10 raised to the power 6 with a volume of 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter cube given our the gas constant as 8.3. So we just have to use is the ideal gas equation. So that is PV equals NRT. So the question requires that we find the temperature T. So that is so that is T equals P V over N R. The P is given as 7.6 times 10 raised to power 6 times the volume is given as 10 raised to power minus 3. Alright, number of moles is given as 6. And the constant here is given as 8.3. By the time we divide all of this, what we should have is 152.6104, roughly approximate of 153. Okay, so join me as we go back to the question and select the correct option. So the temperature for this uh, ID gas that we're looking for is 153 degrees Celsius, option C. Number 28. The relative density of a liquid is a ratio of what? 
Let's look at option A, mass of water to the mass of an equal volume of the liquid. No, the other way around should be mass of the liquid ratio or compared to the mass of water. Option B, up thrust in the liquid to the up, up thrust in water. You can talk about less, loss of weight in hair compared to up thrust in water or weights in hair. So option B is still valid. Let's look at option C, density of water to the density of the liquid. No. For relative density is supposed to be ratio of density of the liquid to density of water we have option d up thrust in water to the up thrust in the liquid the correct option here is option b up thrust in the liquid to the up thrust in water option b is very correct number 29 what will happen to the pressure of a gas if its temperature is reduced to minus 273 degrees celsius this is zero kelvin or absolute temperature so at this absolute temperature the pressure will be equals to zero that means the gas particles there aren't any movement anymore there is no disorderliness noticed or observed so the correct option here is the pressure will drop to zero option b is very correct kindly use the link in the description below to ask your questions right now you just have to do click on the link you are taken to my school website where you ask those questions right on the spot and within moments our solution providers are waiting to help you out so join me as we solve question 30. which of the following does not use magnetic effect of current to function okay um this the lead acid accumulator doesn't need magnetic field okay it's an example of secondary cell another example of secondary cell is the alkaline accumulator okay so we have secondary cell we have primary cells examples of primary cells like daniel cell lickland cells so a lead acid accumulator is an example of secondary cell you can recharge it and use it for a long time so it doesn't need a magnetic effect to function of current to function so the correct option here is option a lead acid accumulator in case you have better steps explanations or ways on how we could better improve this content or tackle any of the questions please would like to know all you have to do for us use the comment section below indicate the question number and the explanations or suggestions you'd like to share number 31 vapor is said to be saturated on top of an enclosed liquid if what if the rate of condensation is equal to the to that of vaporization you know once it is applied they gain more energy okay and they try to escape that they turn into vapor and tries to escape you know since it is a sealed um, enclosed liquid and enclosed container you know some of them will still have to come back and collide with the surface of the liquid and enter back into the liquid phase a time is coming whereby the amount that is exactly exactly becoming a uh, vapor is equal to the amount that is turning back to liquid so you know the rate of vaporization is getting equal to the rate of condensation entering back into the liquid surface so all of this tells you that vapor is said to be saturated on top of an enclosed liquid if the rate of condensation is equal to the rate of vaporization option b is very correct number 32 a pool of water appears to be 1.00 meter deep when viewed vertically from above what is the actual depth of the pool or what is the real depth of the pool given refractive index of water is 1.33 so we call that refractive index equals real depth over apparent depth so that means n equals the real depth which we are looking for over the apparent depth so we are given apparent depth as one so that will be one times 1.33 if you cross multiply okay so your answer will be 1.33 so the real depth is 1.33 meters option d is very correct question 33 shadows and eclipse results from the what this results from direct linear propagation of light that is light travels in a straight line when light cannot pass through an object what you are going to see is going to cast the shadow and the closer the light the smaller the shadow formed okay it's as the same thing as eclipse can be partial or uh, total eclipse okay that is when you see that the moon is positioned where the earth shadow uh, falls okay so all of these they are just evidences of the red linear propagation of light as it's light traveling in a straight line option b 
is super correct. 34. Which of the following is obtained when a magenta is mixed with green color? The color is white because uh, magenta is a complementary color of green. So when you put these two together in the RGB model, what you should get is white. You can also get more explanation by visiting our My School website. The link is provided in the description below. Just click on it and you will have access to this question and the explanations provided by our solution provider. So the correct option here is option C for white. Number 35. Which of the following instruments can be used to measure current in an AC circuit? Okay, the correct answer is the hot wire ammeter. It does this by the thermal expansion of the wire. Okay, so the correct answer is option A for hot wire ammeter. You can use a, a moving coin galvanometer. Though we know that galvanometer can measure small electric currents, okay, but a moving coin galvanometer makes it invalid. So just focus on the option, the correct option. Okay, so which of the following instruments can be used to measure current in an AC circuit? This cannot do this in an AC circuit. So, going by the options provided us, we can see that the hot wire ammeter is the instrument can, that can be used to measure current in an AC circuit. Option A is very correct. We've come to the end of this segment, but there are more video clips to come. All you just have to do so that you can be on top of your game is to hit on the like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as soon as we upload the next video clips.